Here he is, Dr. Johnson, You're Houston, Texas. He's with Cody today, the urban cowboy. He's very thorough in his examination and history. He does his posture evaluation. He certainly is clinically competent. He does his orthopedic and neurological evaluations on every new patient. He lays the patient prone and he does a leg check and then he's identified knockless tests here, the orthopedic evaluation. Now he's doing a palpation, a manual palpation, prone with just his fingers. And he's looking for tenderness, for muscle contraction, for edema. What can I say? He's not just a good doctor, but he's a good chiropractor as well. And then he's going to start with an adjustment. He's going to use his drop table technique. Now the drop table is technically an invention of Thompson technique. Here he goes. He's dropping lumbar spine. And he's going to bring the Pisi form all the way up the spine and all the way back down too. He's trying to break up as much scar tissue and as many adhesions as possible. He's trying to increase range of motion. He's trying to free the body from restriction, allowing the body to move in its most complete optimal range of motion, which increases the overall function of the body. He's not looking at the spine intersegmentally. He's looking at the spine globally. He uses the language of a technique called clinical biomechanics and posture. In this technique, they evaluate posture. They evaluate the curvatures of the spine. Their adjustments are mirror image to posture. They are mirror image to abnormal curvatures. And so Dr. Johnson's approach and his technique has more of this clinical biomechanics and posture than it does an intersegmental technique like Gonstead. Like, ooh. What's he called that move? That's the head slam maneuver right there. Here's some shoulder adjustments. He's still dropping shoulder, chest. He's still dropping. He's doing some ribs here. Whew, man, this closed captioning is hilarious, by the way. <laughs> Last year, what about your baby's tummy? Okay, now he's doing some hip adjustments. He's still talking about posture. Everything that I've heard Dr. Johnson say has been clinically accurate. Commercial. All right, here he goes. Now he's going to adjust the thumb. Now he's adjusting the fingers, elbows, wrists, full body manipulation. He's just going based off of feel and experience. And then here we go. Is this it? Here it is. He's bringing him over to the ring dinger table. Oh, everyone's excited about this. The kids are there. They're excited. The wife's excited. He's raising up his legs. He's putting in the pins. Those pins are fantastic, by the way. It's really what separates the ring dinger from any other long axis traction maneuver. Dr. Johnson loves it. He's got a big smile on his face. Here's the towel already on the table. That's pretty slick, actually. Wrapped around nice and tight, and that was actually more gentle in comparison to a lot of ring dingers that I've seen in the past. The man elicits a patella tendon reflex with a karate chop. How is that not both cool and... Uh, clinically stylish. That ring dinger was much more gentle than a lot of the ring dingers that I've seen in the past, which I like. I really appreciate that Dr. Johnson is using patient specific evaluations to conclude whether or not someone needs a more aggressive ring dinger or a less aggressive ring dinger. He's observing range of motion. Look at that eye that he uses. There's the eagle eye. Dr. Johnson observes posture with the ferocity of a lioness stalking a lame gazelle. And now he's going to use an instrument to perform his final mirror image postural adjustments. Everything he's done so far is really just setting the patient up for this adjustment right here, where he uses the mirror image of this patient's presented posture. He puts them in the opposite of what this patient does all day, every day, and he stimulates the upper cervical spine. And that's the end of Cody's first visit. Next up, huge relief from massive neck release. 
He's using his fingers now doing a muscular palpation and digital examination on the SCM muscle. He's only using his hands here. You can tell he's not looking at anything. He's only going off of the feeling in his fingers. He's observing the tone, the tonicity of the muscle. He's observing asymmetries here. Now he's going to start off with the occiput lift. And here's the lineup. And... This, 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 this. Oh. Ooh, super tight, super fast. Look at his patient. His patient's really digging that one too. Look at that smile. Just a flawless adjustment. Oh, Dr. Jason knows it too. He is a master at seated cervical. Now he's going in for the post check. The post check is worth the price of admission as he goes in to make sure that he's satisfied or accomplished his goal here. He's corrected the asymmetry that he observed before. The acoustics in that room are phenomenal. Up next on who wore it best. Now he's going to do a long axis distraction maneuver. This works well for Dr. Jason because he's really tall. He's using his sternum and chest as the Down contact and point. Loose, loose. Oh, yeah. Yep. All right. So now we've got the prone thoracic spine. Ooh. There's a lot of face paper action here. I can hear a lot of crinkling. I need to get these doctors some crinkleless face paper. These adjustments sound like Christmas morning to me. Here we go. Right here. Look at this. This is crinkleless face paper. Crinkles are fantastic sometimes, but not always. Cash money. Let's see. I got one for Dr. Rahim too. As now he's lining up for a side posture here on the right. He's checking out his x-ray, looking at his listing. Oh, he's lumbar. Wow. He's quick on those side postures. He's coming around to the other side. He always has to tuck his tie in, though. Doc needs a tie tack. He's calling in for the Arthur stim. He's got to bring it out of the other room. Let's see his Arthur stim technique. It looks like the patient's in cervical extension. He's using the Arthur stim to stimulate the upper thoracic, lower cervical spine, or it's probably right at the apex of the curvature. Here we go. What do we got here? It looks like we have a little traction device. He's putting a block underneath of the patient's thoracic spine. It's very similar to what Dr. Johnson does at the end of his adjustments. He's really taking his time for the setup here. Look at that note system that Dr. Jason uses. That is impressive. He's got a 30-inch touchscreen monitor on his wall. He's too tall for it, though. He's got to bend too much. He gave his patient some kind of device there. I'm not sure. Maybe it's a pulse ox reader. Looks like he's going to let him be in some traction. Also taking clinical biomechanics and posture perspective, adjusting the spine, and then restoring curvatures. Oh, it was a timer. He put a timer in his hand. He does all kinds of things in his practice. I see him doing exercises. He talks about nutrition. He's not just adjusting spines here. He's a very well-rounded doctor. And that's the end of his visit. Just got done writing out two early holiday cards. This is crinkleless face paper for Dr. Rahim and Dr. Jason, which means I'm doing this for all of you as well. Okay, so here's Dr. Jason. I got his address, Sherman Oaks, California. Here's Dr. Rahim, Los Angeles, California. Ha, ha, ha.